Hello, today we have a product to test from Speedybee, and I normally know Speedybee about their flight controllers and the way they like to make sort of Bluetooth devices hook up to their own app to do things. I didn't associate as much with goggle modules, and this is an analog goggle module and uh, antenna set. It's got a little patch here and uh, an Omni, which you can't see because it's black on black, but we're going to close up and look at that. Now, Goggle-wise, and you're probably thinking, isn't analog dead? Why are you talking about this? It's like, no, analog is still cheap and very easy and very useful. And it's it's good to have everything, really, because especially if you've got like a lot of quads, looks over there, the quad wall things, yeah. It's very expensive to convert everything to uh, digital. So you, you, you always have a bunch of analog. Now, I normally use the IRC Rapid Fire. Really good system. Uh, one of the things that uh, it was kind of revolutionary, and I think uh, TPS came through with their their one. What's it called? The Fusion or something? Um, and how it works instead of just antenna diversity, i it takes the strongest antenna signal and delivers that picture. It would take parts of the frame from either antenna, depending which was the best, and construct a whole new frame from it. Um, and this was its own mode, and it was very impressive. This little module claims to do the same thing. However, it also claims to be much better at handling interference. So I thought, well, I have to put this one against the rapid fire and we'll see what happens because this is significantly cheaper than this. Rapid fire is good, but it's expensive. This is cheaper. Will it do the same job? Will it do better? And it just so happens that I know when I fly around my house in a little whoop, I go downstairs and outside, I get a whole heap of interference from all the 5.8 Wi-Fi noise. And I thought I could put this side by side easily. I, I put this in a different set of goggles and I fly it with this, then I fly it with this and we can examine how the picture looks in comparison. Um, could it be down to the antennas? Maybe, but we could, if we get a significant difference, we can swap those around and see. So yeah, let's, let's get on with it. And let's go to close up first. I'll show you exactly what you get and uh, how you'd fit it in your goggles and stuff. Okay, so exactly what do you get with the goggle module kit? Well, this actually comes in two forms. The first um, is just this guy on its own, which looks like that. The one I've got is the set with antennas. And what you get there is you've got this patch. It says Maple Wireless on it. Uh, looks like an interesting one. I've seen that design somewhere else. Not can't remember what you call it now. And we've got a Omni, some sort of uh, circular polarized antenna obviously there and for fixing this one on I think it's going to be that one that has this yeah we've got this sort of 45 degree thing to help you get that at the right angle and that is it in that one so the question is well how do you install these things well I'm going to be installing this on my old goggles so I can run them side by side so these are my Fat Shark Domino 3s now, since transferring the rapid fire module over to my uh, HT Zero goggles, I put this one in, which I can't remember the name of, but um, was one I reviewed a while ago. So I just need to take that out, which you do by getting under there, and it should lift out. And then uh, these are all standard. You've got these pins here, which you have to align into those and push it in. I'm going to do this off camera because it's very hard to align things when you're looking through a viewfinder. And it looks like that. That's a neat fit. They were pretty tight and they got a real positive click when it goes in and that is not accidentally coming out. Those will take a little bit of prizing to get back out again. But yeah, that's, that's a nice fit. You see you've got a USB uh, adapter here for doing firmware updates and stuff. And if we just plug in a battery, uh, basically this has come up saying we are on R7 and it gives us a kind of RSSI and I'm guessing, yeah, we can go left and right through the bands, up and down through the numbers. So A1, B1, E, F, R, and we got low band as well. If we press the button, we should go to the menu and we've got a channel lock, a band scan. I doubt there's anything there. I just want to see how quickly it does it. It's like, oh, it thinks A8 is strongest, probably because that's where the Wi-Fi signal is coming from. Uh, what else we got there? We've got the finder. That's really handy. The And we've got a beep as well. This is very similar to the rapid fire, where if you've lost your model, 
you can find it using the um, RSI of the, the video signal. You basically just walk towards it and move your head around if you've got a directional antenna and the beeps get quicker when you're going in the right direction. I find it really, really useful. Uh, apart from Finder, we've got the... Oh, it says, do you want to show the RSSI in the goggles? And you've got the option of left RSSI, none, or I think S is split RSSI. Okay, audio out is on. So if you want to record the audio coming from your uh, quad, whatever, and got a calibration to calibrate stuff, match. I'm not sure what match is. I'll find out about that one. Should also, I, I'm led to believe this shows what's happening in the goggles as well. Let's chat that by plugging in the DVR. So I've just connected up my power play here. So this is what you'd be seeing through the goggles. And if I press the button, we've got the same display there. So you can completely do this from your goggles without having to uh, take them off and adjust stuff, which is pretty neat. And yeah, it shows all the, this, this is nice. This, this is very much like rapid fire as well. As you go through the channels, or the bands in this case, it will show you on that band what, what's the strongest signal. As you see, nothing really going on here as I'd expect, but perhaps some Wi-Fi interference showing up very slightly. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I'm liking this system a lot. Okay, this is what it looks like with the antennas attached. So you see I've got that 45 degree piece, so basically as long as my head's facing frontwards towards the quad, I should have a directional. I'd normally fly with a bit of a taller antenna for the Omni, but Let's see how this works out and we'll put it up against my normal Menace RC antennas that I fly with on rapid fire on HD0. But yeah, let's get myself a little whoop and let's go put it through the torture test by flying out of here, down, downstairs, out into the garden, around the side alley, which really normally gives a very, very bad signal. Okay, ready for testing. I have this little Ishin UZ65, which is a great little indoor quad. Unfortunately, it's on SPI Free Sky, so hopefully it's got the range. Although I'm pretty sure it does because I did this once before, before I noticed that the rapid fire module was in legacy mode. Uh, that means that it works on a basic diversity, so it just switches on the signal. It doesn't try and do the whole frame thing. So we can take a look at that afterwards, but this is me reflying it and seeing what will happen. So we've got rapid fire in the HD0 goggles. I'm gonna pop that there uh, and have it pointing, you know, much the same way as I am. Um, I'll start off wearing the Speedy B module goggles and see how we do. Could be on R1, which is susceptible to Wi-Fi interference around the house, and we'll see how that goes. I can then swap over the goggles just to make sure there's no particular advantage or disadvantage of having one there and one on my head. Uh, yeah, let's get on with it. Let me turn everything on, get recording, and then we'll go. Okay, should have both goggles recording, so let's try taking off this and seeing if everything works. Where's the fan for this? There it is. I haven't worn this for a while, but uh, should be okay. Alrighty. Okay, so we're in stabilization. Let's arm it. Take it off. And to be upstairs all the way, just gonna do a quick little lap around here. And we've got the little lines of interference have started. Sorry, Rush. Rush the dog is not impressed with these high pitched ones. So let's go through kitchen, dining room, and into the lounge. You can see we've got the little uh, RSI indicator for both antennas on this one. I don't usually have that by four. I'll keep it in for this one. So going outside now. Bit of a roll of a screen now, I think. And we'll do the normal torture test going back down here. Not so bad today. When I tried it the other day, um, when I had the rapid fire in the wrong mode, a lot worse in interference. But this seems fairly clean. I wonder what uh, how rapid fire is doing. Because we've got pretty good signal. You can. This is definitely like an, an interference uh, thing, those little white lines, rather than um, like a, a signal not being strong enough thing or being blocked. It's just a different type of blockage you'll get to uh, 
I'll notice them after a while. Still very clean here. No issues, so let's bring it back upstairs and see what we've got. Because although it, we've barely been flying one and a half minutes, these batteries are not the best. So, let's bring it in and kind of land. Blop. As mentioned, I then swapped the goggles around, so I was wearing the HD Zero goggles with the Rapid Fire module, and I put the SpeedyB module with the Fat Sharks just on the side and repeated the tests. And as you can see here, it looks practically identical. I really would find it very hard to choose between them. It's not like one is worse than all the time or something. It's like sometimes the speedy gets slightly more, sometimes rapid fire gets slightly more interference, I mean, and sometimes they both get exactly the same. There's There's barely anything to choose between them, really. What might be more interesting to watch is the one I originally filmed when I accidentally had the rapid fire module in legacy mode. As I said, this means it just switches between normal diversity. It doesn't try and create this frame. And you can see here how much better the speedy B module is than the rapid fire in legacy mode. So if you've got something that just does basic diversity and you're thinking, well, what's the fuss? What, what am I gonna get about one of these modules that tries to construct a frame from the best parts of the, the, the two other antennas? And this is what it looks like in this case. And it was worse interference that day. Wi-Fi seems to be very random about how it interferes. You will see that SpeedyB is doing much better than RapidFire. SpeedyB wasn't without its problems. When it, when it had a, a breakup, sometimes you'd get that bit of rolling, which I don't like. Um, so it was it was worse down the alleyway but then it was better in in the other places it's kind of like you <laughs> you really want to pick and choose as you can there and it was really bad on both systems just around here it was uh it was a very interesting test i think it's like uh as soon as we get inside again then speedy b does much better and rapid fires lagging behind again it's it's again it's it's a bit tricky to choose but as we mentioned, in when both are in their special constructor frame from the two signals, they seem very, very close. Just going to do a quick demo of the Finder because uh, I have demonstrated it before in the uh, Rapid Fire module, but perhaps you didn't watch that one. So I've just put my quad outside in the garden. It doesn't really count for much. Uh, and what I'm going to do here. Is put Finder on start like that. The idea is as we go, we're kind of looking for our quad. You see if we just go like that, it's not so good. Obviously better if you've got more of a distance between yourself. So the problem here is that the Omni would beep no matter what direction you're in. Normally, and I say normally, in the case of rapid fire it just uses the bottom directional antenna so you, you can actually get a direction. This is fine if you know you're far away and you want to know if you're getting vaguely closer or vaguely further away but it, it's not directional enough for me so i thought i know i'll take the top antenna off and try it again so now i've removed the top one it's a bit more directional so we're definitely getting a, a few more blips that way as we come outside Warms up a bit. It can be a problem when you get this close. It's less directional because it's still got some stuff that works on the side. So this worked, but I was unimpressed with how directional it could be. I needed it to be more, I needed it to be more sensitive. Again, rapid fire, the beeps go absolutely crazy fast when you get close. This seemed to get to a sort of a peak when you're in about sort of four feet of it, and it would be the same no matter then what you did, no matter which way you pointed. Perhaps it's the antenna is wider than uh, the regular one I would use on my fat sharks. I just need to make a quick correction about the RSSI stuff in the menu I saw. If you look at the top left, you've got what's called the small RSSI bars. If we go into the menu, if we go to that RSSI part um, and we go to 
LRSSI, which I thought might be left indicator, but it actually means long bar. So if we come back out of this, you will see that the RSSI bars are a lot longer, just in case you need visibility of that. And of course, the other thing you can do is turn them off altogether if you don't feel you need them, which I, I generally don't on the rapid fire. So the only bit I was confused about in the goggles is match mode. It's not mentioned in the manual, and if you go into it, it just sits there and says match. And I had to go back and ask SpeedyB, and the answer is that it ties up with the specific VTX save board out. This VTX, if you hold down some buttons in the goggles, then it apparently links to the VTX, and I assume it works a little bit like uh, a backpack, so when you change channels on the goggles it happens on the VTX as well. Don't know that, I haven't got one of the VTXs to test but I imagine that what it's about. Now you might be wondering why I haven't taken this out and tried to fly far away to see how it does and the reason is it you don't need to. This is me flying a, a kilometer in a quad and you see the picture is perfect on 200 milliwatts. That's because we don't have anything out there that's going to cause massive interference. The idea of these sort of things that can patch frames together is it gets rid of these reflected bits of video signal called multipathing. Uh, and if it rejects the multipath information, then you, what you end up is with a much cleaner picture. Out here on the wilds, 2K here on a plane, we just don't have any hassle with that. So the environment where this really benefits is indoors or in environments like bandos where you've got big metal structures or brick structures where your signal's gonna bounce around. And just to put it into perspective, those clips were from the Rapid Fire module for some weeks ago, but in legacy mode. So it, it's kind of just like you had one antenna. That's how much it makes a difference when there's nothing around you and you're in an open space. It's, it's very easy to get a good picture. But that said, how did these do? Well, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with uh, the way I could fly it around here and comparing it to Rapid Fire, which you kind of need to do because Rapid Fire is the, the, the single module you sort of think about in terms of being very good. It really did hold its own very well. There were sometimes this was slightly worse. There were sometimes where the Rapid Fire was slightly worse. Um, and the fact this can sort of be up there and compete with it, I think uh, says a lot, especially because this is a lot cheaper. There are two versions of this. You, you can get it on its own, you can get it with the two antennas. Obviously on its own is even cheaper again, which is uh, pretty amazing. So the reason I'm not saying, oh, I must swap my rapid fire out immediately is because I did feel that the finder mode needs some work. Um, rapid fire does this a lot better. It's a lot more sensitive. And so I can, when I'm l looking for little tiny quads outside, I need to know, even, even with sort of three or four feet, I need to be able to pinpoint it really accurately and, and have my uh, directional antenna say it's right there on the floor because they're so small you can move over it. At the moment it's sort of beep 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 and you're like okay so I'm close but where is it? It's not directional enough. I think that could be improved. There's no firmware updates yet. Hopefully that is something that can be improved because the rest of the system actually looks really really nice. So yeah this is the Speedy B 5.8 goggles receiver. It doesn't have a flashy name it's just called that. And uh, it was kind of supplied by SpeedyBee for review, so many thanks to them. And of course, you can find links down below if you want to check it out in more detail. If they do update the firmware and improve the finder mode, then I will come back and do some more uh, testing with it because this is a little bit smaller than Rapid Fire, so I'm quite keen on being able to replace it in my HD Zero goggles because those are the ones I use at the moment. But we'll see what happens and we'll keep track of it. But for now, I hope that review has been helpful. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.